It's time for Florida State basketball. This is the Leonard Hamilton Show. Brought to you by Coca-Cola. Coke Zero Sugar has real Coke taste with zero sugar and zero calories. Try one today. And by SunTrust, the official bank of Florida State Athletics. And now your hosts, Gene Deckerhoff and head coach Leonard Hamilton. Welcome to the Leonard Hamilton Show. We talk Florida State basketball today and a couple of big wins to talk about on today's program. Wins on the road in Blacksburg against Virginia Tech and a home victory over a very tough Georgia Tech team. Coach, a great week to be a Florida State basketball fan. Well, there's no doubt there was two very important victories for our basketball team. I thought our guys were, were locked in and <clears throat> they were focused. Uh, and for the most part, we executed. Uh, the games were hard fought, though. You know, the games could have gone either way. Uh, these teams in the ACC now are very hungry for victories, and, and so are we, and so it makes it extremely competitive. In both games, Coach, both victories by Florida State, two things stood out. One, we shot very well, and two, we made free throws down the stretch. Well, I've always thought that we would be a pretty good free throw shooting team. Um, we, we shot well in practice, but I think the youth of our team shows up sometime when we, we now have the right mental and emotional composure when we go to, to the foul line. Uh, but well, we seem to be maturing, uh, we're hitting our free throws, we're shooting better from the perimeter. Hopefully that will uh, help us win some more games. <laughs> free throw shooting and field goal shooting makes a big difference in the game of college basketball. On today's program, highlights of Florida State's big wins over Virginia Tech and Georgia Tech. And somewhere during the show, we're going to have a chance to visit with Brian Angola from Columbia, South America, and he's got a story to tell. That's on today's show. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Leonard Hamilton Show. We're talking Florida State basketball. We got great highlights from a trip to Blacksburg, Virginia. Snow on the ground, but it wasn't really ice cold outside. Coach, inside, tiny Castle Coliseum. It's always hot. And boy, don't they have a great home court advantage. Well, they have a great crowd. There's no doubt about that. They were very much into the game because Buzz has done a great job. Florida State against uh, a, a team that really defends home court. A tough team to beat on their home court. But we get the ball inside early in this ball game. It sort of sets the pattern of what we're going to try to do. Well, we have much better uh, inside out, outside balance in this particular game. Uh, Fiondu uh, did a very good job of, of giving us some extra points, and so did Chris Camaggi. We moved the ball around, and how about Phil Colford? He has really developed into an outside shooting threat, hasn't he? Well, no, there's no doubt that his, his baskets have been very timely. He's doing a great job for us. Eight points, and that was his only made three. How about uh, Fiondu Kevin Gelly? He's got some range, doesn't he? No doubt about that. He is just uh, coming into his own. He's really learning how to play within himself. Uh, there's no doubt that he's uh, going to be a very good player for us. Four of his nine points in the ballgame. He also had uh, eight rebounds, uh, career best. So uh, Kevin Gelly helps the inside game and the outside game as well. It's always been there. Well, there's no doubt whenever you have uh, major contributions, double doubles from your post, that mess, that's significant. C.J. Walker with a triple. He had a string where he made like three in a row, Coach, that really gave us some momentum midway through the first half. Well, we have different guys stepping up at different times during the year, and that's really, really doing the game, and that really is making a big difference in some of the victories that we've had. A big week for the guy wearing number 14, Junior. He's the leader of this ball club. He is uh, Terrence Madden. He had a tremendous game on the road and at home. No doubt about that. He's been our go-to guy, he, but he's been the most consistent player during the course of the season. Sometimes overlooked the defense of C.J. Walker, and that steal leads to a stuff, and the Knolls are rolling in Blacksburg. Well, you can say we're rolling. We roll into a four-point <laughs> advantage at, during this, at this particular time. But we got major contributions from a lot of different people. It, 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 now you see uh, MJ hitting one of his patent threes. Yeah, his first basket of the game. And so you don't have to shoot necessarily three-point shots to, to beat a, a defense like Texas. You can drive to the basket like Terrence. That's the money in the bank, isn't it, Coach? Well, we got to get the ball inside more uh, to Kamaji and, and, and to Fiondu. Uh, we're not getting the number of shots I think that we should be getting for those guys and we're going to work on that remainder of the week. That was a fast break, a great move to the basketball from one end of the court to the other. Sort of caught uh, Virginia Tech a little flat-footed in transition. Coach, we lead at halftime, 41-38. We're going to expand that lead here early in the second half. Well, once again, here we, we, we changed a little bit angle of some of our screens and we started going to the baseline. And uh, It really, really gave us a big lift. There's Chris standing in front of the rim and, uh, just tipping him in. 
and you can see that every every possession is very, very important. They play a little zone and we attack and there's a stuff by Phil Kofer. And, uh, in this game, we had four or five Seminoles in double figures led by MJ Walker. We're gonna see MJ Walker go to work here very shortly. He had family in town, they cheered him on and that's an NBA three. <laughs> well, every basket was important. Uh, you, you, you don't go on the road and win an ACC unless you're really making good you're making good decisions with the ball, and that's one right there. You see MJ taking the ball to the basket very strong. Watch him again. He lays it up. He took the defense to the rim and scores the layup. He had, he had. I understand he had to scrounge up about 18 tickets for family that wanted to sit behind the bench and cheer him on. Well, there's no doubt that he has uh, the ability, and I, I thought that the, his family being there did motivate him a little more, and he was a little more relaxed and determined. Just a true freshman from Jonesboro, but a lot of his family reside in the Virginia Beach area. Florida State continues to attack. Brian Angola, real strong down the stretch in Blacksburg. Speaking of strong, he goes one side to the other side, and he's not—he's more than just a three-point shooter, any coach. Well, the, the, it was good ball movement on, on our team's part. And, and now we have to get more of those. Uh, Chris uh, has developed a pretty good uh, turnaround jump shot, and he's become a pretty good low post threat. We got to make sure we get the ball to those guys a lot more. Terrence Mann continuing to do his thing. Terrence had a tremendous week for the Seminoles uh, here in Blacksburg and also in a home game. We'll see highlights of it a little later on. Angola distributes. Nice little step back jumper, and that's three more of 24 scored by the freshman from Jonesboro. But anytime you get the ball moving, this was a big play right here. Big deflection and steal. Wow, but that was a very timely uh, possession there for us to, to get an easy basket deflection, just outrun two guys, get to the basket. That's that's a lot of that's a determination for a freshman. Career game for MJ Walker and points and made field goals and made three-point field goals and in rebounds. Uh, all adds up to a 91-82 Florida State win over the Virginia Tech Hokies, a tough team to beat at Castle Coliseum because we shot well, we made free throws down the stretch. Both teams shot extremely well from the floor. Uh, it was like we was playing brother off ball. Both of us shot 53% from the floor. Uh, neither one of us had the ability to, to, to stop, but stop each other, but I thought we executed, moved the ball, we had high percentage shots, and we were very fortunate, and then hit our free throws down the stretch. Played well on the road, and Coach notched our first road ACC victory of the year. The sort of opens the lid, now maybe we can win some more. Huh? <laughs> ah, let's go. Florida State beats Virginia Tech, and we come back home for a two-game stretch at the Tucker Center. Great crowd on hand Wednesday night. We'll have highlights of Florida State versus Georgia Tech coming up a little later on in the show. Now up next, a chance to meet Brian Angola from Columbia, South America. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Leonard Hamilton Show. We sort of teased before we went to break uh, a chance to meet Brian Angola. Coach, there's a young man that came to the States, played junior college, a junior college All-American, and boy, oh boy, can anybody shoot the long-range bomb better than Brian Angola? Angola's having a great uh, year for us, but most important people don't understand, he's probably, I think, the best defensive guard in the ACT as well. Uh, he really enjoys it. He he's, has great pressure on the ball. He very seldom fouls. Uh, he's long and, and athletic, and he impairs the vision of people who he's defending. So he's been a very, very a strong portion, a very part of our team this year. Brian Angola did not speak English when he came to the States. He's fluent now. Let's watch. Hey, everyone. I'm Sarah Hunter, and joining me is Florida State men's basketball senior guard, Brian Angola. Brian, thank you so much for being here. Thank you guys for having me. Absolutely. So talk to me a little bit about growing up in Colombia. Did you always play basketball? Was it something you picked up later on? Well, growing up in Colombia, it's always a soccer country. So always, I always played soccer when I was younger. And my dad and my mom used to play basketball. And I actually hated it. Because I thought basketball was just for women when I was younger, growing up. And one day I just went and practiced with my dad. And I grabbed the ball and I started running. And there was like travel. I was like, I don't like this, I went home. The next day I went again and then I started liking it from there. So growing up it was it was kind of tough because nobody knew about basketball. It was just a sport that you have for fun. And then I decided to go uh, play in another city uh, far away from my town and since then I just love it. And what made you want to come to the United States to play basketball? Well, in Colombia there's not that much opportunity for basketball, like to go to school and stuff like that. So I always wanted to finish my school and just play the sport that I love in basketball and in the United States, kind of like 
a big, big sport, so I decided to, I wanted to come here. And once you did make that decision, I know you started your collegiate career at North Idaho Junior College. What made you choose Florida State? Well, coming from North Idaho from Junior College, I always wanted to go to a big, big conference. And I have pretty good offers from other schools, but when I came to Florida State, and on my visit, talking to Coach Ham, uh, seeing the fan base that you guys have here, and then seeing what Coach Ham wanted to do with this program, and where we wanted to go, and I fell in love with, with the idea, and now we're here. And who would you say is your all-time favorite basketball player, and why? Uh, I would say Kobe Bryant is my all-time favorite basketball player. Why? It's just his way to uh, approach the game, how he, his work ethic and the love that he showed to basketball. I feel like that was the greatest. For me, he's the greatest player ever. Like I say, some people will be mad at me because MJ, but I never saw Michael Jordan play a game, so I always watch Kobe Bryant, so Kobe's probably say Kobe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is your favorite thing to do in your spare time when you're not playing basketball or studying for classes? Uh, my favorite thing to do Probably listen to music and play video games. Sometimes read a little bit, and we yeah, probably say that. What's your favorite type of music? I listen to uh, Spanish music. Uh, Chuck It Down. This is my favorite uh, artist. It's a group from Colombia. That is from one of the my dad's region. They they great. So you're graduating from Florida State this semester. What are you looking forward to the most about life post Florida State? Well, I'm. Um, yeah, like you said, I will graduate this semester, and that's something that I'm really proud of. My mom probably will be really proud of me. And what I'm looking forward is just to see what the future holds for me. Uh, if it's basketball or I saw basketball, you know, basketball is not going to be there my whole life, so getting my degree is something that I'm really proud of, and nobody's going to take that from me. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Brian, thank you so much for joining thank me. You. For more on Florida State men's basketball, be sure to check out Seminoles.com. Welcome back to the Leonard Hamilton Show and a Charles Dickens phrase, a tale of two techs. Well, a tale of two cities, but coach back to back, Virginia Tech, now Georgia Tech. Let's watch the highlights. FSU playing at home, coach, great crowd on here. We've had tremendous crowds during the month of January at the Tucker. Well, we opened up to begin the game and Georgia Tech wanted to play uh, some zone defense. Well, I think they were a little reluctant because we've been shooting the ball very well from the perimeter. We had good ball movement, good ball reversal, and you've got Chris right in the middle in front of the rim, and it's hard to handle a great awareness of, uh, of our players. Yeah, one of five assists by Terrence Mann, who had a career game score. Here's CJ attacking. He's a left-handed shooter, but he can drive with the right hand as well, can't he? Well, the defense is, is, is playing him to his left hand, and he's a smart enough to, to, to see that he needs to go to his right hand. You always feel a lot more comfortable when Phil Kofer makes that first jump shot, don't you? Well, I, I feel good that we're moving the ball. We had so many possessions where we had a good ball move. We had eight possessions in the second half. We made six passes or more, and we scored on six of them. And that's, that's always good. Another assist from Terrence Mann, and how high can Phil Kofer elevate? He was a full arm's length above the rim, wasn't he? Well, there's no doubt that we were concerned that they would stay in their zone defense, man. but they did a very good job of, of, of mixing that defense. And once again, uh, coming off the screen, taking the ball to the basket, and Kamaja being in the right place. Now here's a steal. You just talked about Brian Angola. We just had a chance to visit with him. A steal on a layup at the other end. Three-point play, very important in the beginning of the game because uh, it was a nip and tuck game back and forth. And we needed those, uh, those hustle baskets. Florida State attacking, uh, uh, now it looked like a man-to-man -man defense. And there's Terrence Mann, two of his career-high 30 points in the ball game. C.J. Walker, an assistant. We talked about Brian Angola. This is a four-point play, Coach. Brian Angola makes the three. He's harmed. He's going to go to the line. He's our best free throw shooter. Watch this again. My goodness, how far? Was that a 35-foot jump shot? I, I think, think it was. We we'll it only counted for three. <laughs> <laughs> well, then he's capped the four-point play. And another steal by Brian Angola. Unselfish basketball, Coach. That's what I liked about that play. No doubt about that. That was a good steal uh, and, and a great assist. Angola gets the steal, and C.J. dishes. and. Again, a career night for that fella wearing number 14, Terrence Mann. He did not miss a shot in the first half, Coach. Yeah, Brandon Allen come off the bench, and gave uh, one of my guys a, a big rest and making great contributions. He's a great defender, 
you're going to see him get more and more playing time, especially now uh, that uh, we have some injuries. Brandon Allen played just five minutes, but he gets, he's productive. He got a, a nice little layup. Here's Terrence Mann going to the rim, slam dunk. What a tremendous play that was. No doubt about that. Uh, I, I, great spacing by our team, uh, good floor balance. Uh, when you, and we're shooting the well from the perimeter that, that creates problems for the defense. And Coach, you said at your press conference after the game that his best basketball is probably a better. Here's Phil Kofer with a three-point shot, a little off-balance shot. Well, we, we needed that basket. We had a flurry of, of points that we got down the stretch there right as the uh, as the, uh, first, the first half in. Yeah, buzzer beater by Tara Gessu. Tara's man, 21 points of his 30 in the first half, including that buzzer beater that kissed off the window and dropped through the net. And Knowles go in up big at halftime, 50 to 36. In the second half, Coach, uh, uh, again, we attack the interior of their defense. Well, we're moving the ball around. We, we like to get the ball a lot more consistently. In, in, inside, but uh, here again, when you have guys that making plays like this, it really, really uh, gives you a, a, a inspiration and motivates your team. We get the ball down the court in transition. Trent Forrest playing uh, the point for us right now gets a transition layup. But Trent, Trent's uh, contribution very seldom is, 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 is noticed because he defends, he moves the ball, he makes great decisions. Uh, he, he's a really, really uh, stat stuffer in, in some, somewhat of a solid way two of his steals, that one leads to a fast break stuff. He had six points and a rebound in 15 minutes of play for the Seminoles. At home, MJ Walker, this is what he does. He almost stepped on your toe with that jump. Shot. Great awareness by, by, by Trent. Taking the ball to the right and having the presence of mind to, to see a, a teammate over on the left side of the floor. Big play by him. Now, back-to-back -back baskets by that freshman wearing number 23. A three-point shot, a nice little jump shot from about 12 feet away, and the Knowles build on a lead. Now, Georgia Tech makes a little run. They cut it down to single digits. I don't know how he made that layup. He had but, three defenders trying to block that shot. Good ball movement, good ball reversal, good awareness of, of guys recognizing each other. MJ Walker, another, th I think they call that a two, a sneaker may have been on the line, but MJ finished after a career game with nine points uh, in about 14 minutes. You'll take that every night, won't you? No doubt about that. That's a nice soft touch by, by Terrence. Uh, he's really, really zoned in in this particular game. When you're hot, you're hot, Jerry, everyone said, and by golly, uh, uh, Terrence Mann was red hot, as was Brian Angola. There were two leaders, 49 points between those two. Well, we like to see good leadership from guys who've been around and showing the level of maturity. Yeah. Uh, Terrence says, I got my 30, how about you getting 20? There's another jump shot by Brian Angola. <laughs> Knowles are uh, rolling big now, and we're going to win big by 11 points over a Georgia Tech team that allowed just about 62 points a ball game, Coach. We score 88 points against them. Well, there's no doubt that we scored, that we were moving the ball and making good decisions. Uh, we had 50 points at halftime, and I felt pretty good about our offensive execution. Uh, but they wouldn't go away. None of the teams in the ACC will, 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 will not be fighting for, for the whole 40 minutes. We were very fortunate to get a home victory that was that we really needed. Coach, 59.3% floor shooting, a phenomenal percentage against an ACC opponent. That's right up there in the top 10 all time against ACC foes. Well, there's no doubt that our guys are locked in. Uh, they're playing so unselfishly, moving the ball, making the extra pass, and creating offense, some for my defense, but also making the extra pass to get higher percentage shots for, for each other. We've got guys who are locked in to playing together, and I, I like to see that. Hopefully, that'll be a strength of ours down the stretch. 88-77, Florida State knocks off Georgia Tech. We take care of two techs in a week. Up next, Florida State's gonna take on that rival from South Florida, the Miami Hurricanes, and then travel to Winston-Salem, North Carolina. We'll take a look at the week ahead in just a moment. An exciting week to be a Florida State basketball fan. The week is behind us with two wins over Virginia Tech and Georgia Tech. Coach, the 77th meeting between Seminoles and Kings coming up uh, to today, Saturday in Tallahassee. Well, there's always seen to be a lot of excitement in the air when you're playing against the Hurricanes uh, in whatever sport. Uh, it's not going to be any different. Uh, it's going to be a sellout crowd. Everybody's excited. Uh, we both are jockeying for position in, in the ACC race now. Games are very important to both of us. I think you're going to see teams really, really fighting hard. Canes and Knowles at the Tucker Center, and a week ahead we'll play at Wake Forest and at Louisville before returning home. That's our show for today. Thanks for joining us, and let's go Knowles. This has been the Leonard Hamilton Show. Brought to you by Coca-Cola. 
Coke Zero Sugar has real Coke taste with zero sugar and zero calories. Try one today. And by SunTrust, the official bank of Florida State Athletics.